Hello and welcome to Inside EVs. Today we are going inside Ford at the Ford Performance Technical Center where we are going to meet the team behind the all-electric Mustang Mach-E. We'll be talking about how they use this simulator for virtual vehicle development, how they designed and engineered the car, and some of the technology behind it. You're going to see interviews with some of the most influential people involved with the Mach-E's development, as well as the strategy moving forward for their electrification plans. This is a really special one. Thanks for subscribing to Inside EVs, and I hope you enjoy this episode. At this building, they have two simulators that we will be jumping in here in just a little bit, where we talk about how vehicles go from design to actually driving on the road and how this facility can speed up this process. So here I'm with my new friend, Lou from Ford Performance, and he really runs and has a lot of the visionary behind this <laughs> simulator experience and how they're using it in Ford. So Lou, why don't you explain a little bit about how you guys use the simulator technology? Sure, sure. So it really enables us to take everything you would think of doing to a car in a physical world and put it in one virtual room, right? So we can take and build the car models, which are what runs the simulator itself. So once you get a model built, then you can take that and you can travel all over the world in an hour. So we can run tracks that we have and surfaces that we have here in the, in the US. We can do things for Europe, for uh, all the different uh, regions that Ford has. And it enables us to both speed products to market, develop them for the right market, and hit all the targets that each program uniquely needs for their customer. That's super exciting. And today we're gonna to specifically be talking about the Mach-E and a lot of the electrification engineering that you have done here uh, with Ford. But can you share a little bit of details of maybe some of the other projects that have been built and worked on out of this facility? Yeah, so we, we have a lot of future product that uh, you know can't really talk about right now, but we have uh, many different things from both cars, the EVs like you've seen at the Mach-E, um, Mustang for sure. I can t you know definitely share that there's been uh, work here on the Mustang along with, with uh, the physical development and a lot of our SUVs and trucks as well. This facility has grown into one of our main tools to help us work in the virtual world and speed those products to market. And we'll get into it as well, but in what part of the design engineering process do you mostly utilize this facility? So there's really three phases to this, but we use it in all three phases. The first is like trying to conceptually figure out what the vehicle needs to be, right? What is the right thing for our customer? What are the right targets to set? And that can be done very early before you build any parts. This is a very good tool for that. Then once you figure that out, then you can use it to do the concepts, put them to a test with humans in the loop for that. And then finally for all our virtual development that we can take off the track, do it a lot faster and do it in the, in the simulator. It's amazing. It's really gonna speed up a lot of time. Exactly. It takes a lot of the safety risk, right? Of pe exactly. having people in the cars all the time. Yep, safe place to do unsafe things. That's, that's what we do to help keep our customers ultimately safe at the end. And I'm gonna try some unsafe things in cars in the simulator world in a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Before we really get into driving Mustang Mach-E, let's talk about the simulator itself. This simulator is essentially a tub sitting on a robotic chassis underneath. Inside of the tub is a Shelby GT500 interior, which is really cool. When you climb up into this contraption, put your seatbelt on and put on the noise canceling headphones, you really do feel like you're sitting inside of a normal car, which makes sense because you're inside a Shelby interior. My experience in the simulator started out driving a front engine, rear wheel drive V8 sports car. You can take your guess as to what that was. Once I became comfortable with that experience, I was instantly transformed into driving a pickup truck with its payload at maximum, which was a huge change. It really showed how diverse the simulator was and how accurate it made it feel like you were driving a normal car. Once I became comfortable with the simulator, some of the differences from real life into the sim world, I asked to drive the Mustang Mach-E and they put me in the dual motor all wheel drive version as mentioned. There was an instant change behind the wheel and now you will get to hear what it was like behind the wheel. And this is not the GT version, but let's give it a go at some full power punch. Let's go in three, two, one instant acceleration look at the numbers climb up on this thing 50 60 70 75 
Well, the acceleration is definitely impressive, especially coming out of that pickup truck, but just in general, watching those numbers climb up, um, this would indicate it's definitely not gonna be slow. It also means the GT version is gonna be pretty wild. If you wanna see more of this driving footage from inside the simulator, take a look at the link in the description below. For now, we have some more interviews to do. We're still at the Ford Performance Technical Center and then this time with Mark Kaufman, who is the global head of all EV efforts by Ford, codenamed Team Edison, correct? That's right, and uh, we've got a great strong team behind us around the world, and it's a great exciting time to be working on electric vehicles at Ford with $11.5 billion of investment going into product. Right, that's insane, it's really cool. So my first question of many is, when are we gonna see Mach-E hit the streets? Well, when we revealed the product last November, uh, we had a reservation site go live, and we said that we were gonna deliver in late 2020. And despite all the challenges, the team at Ford uh, has been rising to the challenge and, and finding creative ways to keep the work going. And we're still on track for deliveries in the U.S. in late 2020. So today we're going to be talking a lot about Mach-E specifically, a lot of the design and engineering work that went into it, especially with the simulators that are behind me. But can you share any details on the Mach-E's platform, if we'll see that same platform used across other vehicles going forwards? Yep. So, so the, the Mustang Mach-E was the very first Ford fully dedicated battery electric vehicle platform. Uh, super important, as you know, when you start getting up to the range of 300 miles, which was an important number. We know consumers like seeing that range start with the number three, uh, that you really need a dedicated platform to do that. So the Mustang Mach-E is the first on this platform. Uh, we have a few minor adjustments to the platform, but this platform essentially lives on to uh, expand a whole product portfolio. When we looked at what our EV strategy was going to be at Ford, uh, the strategic assessment we came back with is we want to lean into Ford and we want to lean into our most iconic products. And what more iconic product do we have in Ford Motor Company than the Mustang? Followed behind, we've announced both an F-150 and a Transit. Right, so let's talk about Mustang, for example. Mustang is really a performance-oriented brand. It goes back all the way to the 60s. It has a huge loyal following. Why did you choose Mustang for electrification? Well, I think, number one, we are expecting a number of EVs to be launching around the world, and there's only one product that can ever say it has the soul of a Mustang. And really, the technology has some great capabilities to it, um, if you think about you know, the, the BEV having instant torque, so the GT version of this, 612 foot-pounds of torque. So you've got an insane amount of torque, but what was really important for us is that low center of gravity. So here you can offer a crossover body style, SUV body style, and have a center of gravity that's just a little bit, and I do mean just a little bit higher than the Mustang Coupe. So we really felt we could deliver a product that has great performance, great handling, great acceleration, that can live up to the pony on the front, and at the same time, though, you now can get five adults into the vehicle. Let's talk about that screen a little bit. The ethos behind the screen is that everything that you would need the car to do would be there easily and, and, and right in front of you. So how does that work with, let's say you're going on a road trip, for example. This is a question we get all the time on our side, which is how do you plan an electric vehicle road trip from your car? Currently, as you know, you would get in your car, you have 40 apps on your phone, you got to figure out which one to choose, find the station, make sure it works what's Ford doing to make long distance travel and even just everyday use of the vehicle easier with this bigger screen you just hit on, on the absolute right word easy so uh, our CEO Jim Hackett really created a push for design thinking and human centered design so right at the start of this so that our team got formed back in October of 2017 uh, the pain point if you will around how do I find charging when I'm traveling super easy to identify up front, so it's about who can execute the best on that. We've been very focused on making it very easy, whether you're on your mobile app or in the vehicle, to identify where there's charging stations. If you're using that navigation system to essentially let the car know where you're going, not only will it tell you where there's charging stations and the power of the charging stations, it'll even go as far to tell you whether the charging station is open or not. So if you're one of those people, and I have to admit I fall into that category, maybe calling it to the last minute, yep. the last thing you want to do is be getting off and finding out there's a queue, especially <laughs> as we get more and more EVs on the road. Yes. So we've really tried to make the whole charging experience as easy as possible for the customer. So real-time charging status will be pumped into the screen then, which is incredible. Yep, and that, and that we again, we'll see where, where the rest of the industry comes out, but we really think that's going to be a great feature for our customers. And then let's talk charging network real quick. 
Uh, clearly the ability to high power DC fast charge while you're driving or if you're not in the speed for that quick top off when you're when you're driving to a, a further location and just looking a way to get some charge in the vehicle. Uh, we have partnered with a number of energy providers. So again, for those who are listening that, that know this drill, right? Uh, you have probably four or five different subscription cards and accounts to try to manage. Our strategy was, again, let's make it as simple and easy as possible. So through the Ford Pass app, we're able to consolidate all of that, central paying with one bill, car recognized, having all of that easy at your fingertip, and it gives us uh, 13,500 charging stations around the U.S. I'm here with Heather Fadulo, who is responsible for chassis and driving dynamics of Mach E. Heather, thank you so much for meeting with us. Yeah, thank and, you. Um, I'm really curious about your role of Mach E. Can you explain mm -hmm. a little bit of what you did, your input? Yeah, sure. So my team is responsible for the vehicle dynamics, which is traditionally ride, steering, and handling of the vehicle. Um, whether that's a gas or a BEV. From a Ford dynamic standpoint, we have uh, a desire, especially in our sports car products, to deliver really good steering. So that was something that we focused on. So it's really great to hear that you picked up on the turn in. Um, and then as far as the stability of the vehicle, it's something that we work towards to have a vehicle that's fun to drive. Um, and in the real world, we have some different modes that you know would be offered to be able to allow customers to explore the agility of the vehicle. But Ooh, that sounds pretty exciting. <laughs> <laughs> so essentially, you'd be able to have the car perform different ways based on user adjustable settings. This is true, yeah. Yeah, that's really exciting. That's very cool. And so let's talk a little bit about your involvement with the simulator. So mm -hmm. I assume you've spent many hours in this thing trying out components. Oh yeah, I'm never able to spend enough time here, to be honest. There's right. always something we can learn. And so, so what, are type, what are the types of things that you've tried to adjust in the simulator that have translated to the production version of a car? So the thing that's really nice about the simulator is anything that we can change in a vehicle development environment, we can change on the simulator, but we can just do it much faster. So if you're talking about chassis tuning, springs, bars, shocks, that's very easy. One of the other nice things is if we want to look at a different tire size, for instance, we're not limited by the ability to actually fit the tire on the car, to be honest. So we can virtually model that tire, what the properties of the tire are, and we can drive that in the simulator without having to worry about a mechanical package actually bolting up that's a real problem in the real world. Yeah, that's really interesting to think about. So you could essentially put 32 inch wheels on the car <laughs> if you wanted to and see how poorly it drives. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. There's but probably still some modeling limitations. <laughs> Maybe we didn't go that far, but um, you know, to do some semi-realistic what if studies, you can do things like that. That's really interesting. And so what do you feel for your time with the simulator in production made the largest change? What was the one thing that you said, all right, we thought this was going to work, then you got in the simulator, they're like, no, we need to ax this. Was there anything in particular? Um, well, I don't think there's anything we've done in the simulator that has been different than what we would have expected in the real world. So I think you can apply kind of general engineering principles to that solution, and generally a better tire is going to have better performance now. When we make a real car, there's a lot of attributes that have to come together to try to pick something like a tire. And so as a vehicle dynamics person, I don't get the only say in how that there's tire is. Yeah, exactly. Well, if I'm honest, and I love vehicle dynamics, but I also am a real person who lives a real life. And um, I recently bought a, a road bike, a bicycle. And when I went to pick the car up, I picked it up in a traditional Mustang and um, everybody said, no problem, it's gonna fit. I did some rough measurements and it fit, it wasn't a big deal. But then a couple months later, I was going somewhere and I had my bike and a Mach-E and it just fit in with no problem. It was just, I, you know, didn't even have to take the tire off. Let's talk technology. What is Ford doing to make sure that the Mach-E will stay relevant as time goes on? Yeah, well, that's obviously hugely important, especially in today's world. Uh, people are expecting that now. It's becoming more and more of an expectation. And so every module on the Mach-E is over the air updatable, nearly every module. So nearly every module? Nearly every module. drivetrain? Everything. Wow. Like I said, nearly every module. Not, not everyone, but almost. Uh, but what that does is that enables us to be able to continually update the vehicle, uh, making it better, uh, offering new features, you know, being able to really uh, have a better relationship with the customer and, and then the customer with their machine 
uh, based on the over-the-air capability that we're going to have. And so whether we're working on, you know, a simple fix to something that we found or whether it's giving them, like I said, and, and something new that they didn't have before. So feature unlocked. Yeah, absolutely. All that kind of stuff. Right. Absolutely. And so that's going to continually make the, mas the Mach-E uh, more and more uh, desirable. Uh, as time goes on, because right. it'll just keep getting better. It's like getting a new car every yeah. couple months or so. Yeah. And will there be uh, user purchasable upgrades to the vehicle? So could you buy a base one and then upgrade software over time? Well, clearly we're working on what that would look like uh, in totality and, and how you and how you could do that. So I would say stay tuned. Uh, we're working on that very thing. And uh, I think this, this, this unlocks such a huge potential for us. Uh, on being able to really communicate with that customer in a different way than we ever have before. Because before, you know, you'd sell it in the dealership, and then once they left, that relationship was almost over unless they came back to the dealership. Now that relationship can be continuous, and we can const constantly be servicing the customer, communicating with them, and, and again, making their product better each and every day. And you had mentioned every, or at least almost every module could be updated. And That's does right. that include uh, driver assistance systems, for example? Oh yeah, for sure. In fact, we have uh, right now, we're gonna, it, it, the hardware is going to be in the car at job one, but it won't be turned on right at job one, but we're going to have uh, the ability for people to drive hands-free. And so we've got monitors that are in the vehicle that will be monitoring your, your state. So, you know, sometimes people have that where you have to keep putting your hands back on the wheel. Right, there's a torque sensor in the wheel for yep. driver monitoring. Yep. So we are monitoring the driver with cameras. And so you won't have to keep touching the wheel. So as long as you're in those zones that enable the, the hands-free driving, we're going to monitor you. The car will be monitoring you to make sure that you're just paying attention and that you're awake. And assuming all that's good, the car's just going to do its thing and you won't have to keep, you know, engaging with the car. So that's a feature that won't be enabled at job one because we have to finish some testing. Everything's going fine, but we just won't have the testing fully complete. But the cars will have all the hardware in them that they need. And then over the air, we'll turn that feature on and then you'll have you'll have that feature. That's so incredible uh, to be able to offer hands-free driving. One of the cool features uh, of our over the air update capability is going to be our ability to make those updates sort of in the background. So sometimes like, people envision they get an update and the car has to be down for that update. You know. Uh, even like smartphones, for instance, there's times that the smartphone has to go down in order to make the update, right? But in our case, we're going to be able to do the majority of our updates in the background, seamless. You won't even know that it's happening. And then once the update happens, then it'll just kick in. And so you won't have this downtime. So you won't have like this disruption. scheduling a time to do it. Right. You don't have to do that. I'll be eating dinner at this time and let me do it while I'm eating. It'll just happen. It'll just happen, which is, cool. which is really thinking about how people use their their vehicles and thinking about you know customers in their lives and how to make it seamless right we don't want to disrupt people's lives and so it's just it's a really cool feature that we're proud about and i can't wait for people to be able to experience it we want to say a huge thank you to lou mark heather and dave all for sharing their time and insight into the all-electric mustang mach e project we hope you enjoyed this if you'd like to see more please subscribe to inside evs see you on the next episode